kind of stands out to you about this matchup? I mean, just these two teams uh, facing off and going into a big game Monday night. I think the biggest thing that really stands out is how different these teams are in terms of the expectations that they face this season. You know, TCU is a team that was fin picked to finish seventh in their conference. Georgia has been far and away the number one team and the best team this season. You know, I covered Georgia in the opener against Oregon, and I said that week, Georgia's going back to the national championship. They have been able to reload. Their defense didn't miss a beat after losing all of those players to the NFL. Stetson Bennett is lights out when it matters most. And TCU is kind of unexpected. And no one expected anything of them, but we expected all of this of Georgia. So I think that those differences are really interesting. It's very David versus Goliath. And one thing I've noticed with TCU is that they're going into this game feeling pretty free, like there are no expectations on them. And it's interesting, it'll be interesting to talk to Georgia players and see how they feel, if they feel the weight of the expectations or if this is something they've been here before and it really doesn't phase them. So I think that'll be a really interesting storyline going into this game. You mentioned Stetson. What strikes you when you're down on the sideline getting to see him, you know, even in between even in between drives and plays, what sort of stands out to you about how he kind of goes about his business? I think his poise stands out above everything else. Even after negative plays, he's not phased. He's not rattled. He's not super fiery or emotional. It's rare that you see emotion out of him. Like we saw emotion out of him after the semifinal win because I think it was a relief to, to win and to walk off that field a winner because it was such a close game. But usually he is so even keeled and just has ice in his veins. I mean, you saw him in last year's national championship game. He didn't play very well the first half. Second half, it was like that had never happened. So I think his poise is something that yeah. will benefit him throughout his career, but it's also something that both of these teams have quarterbacks that are unfazed by negative plays or by um, being down late in games. So I think that this game will come down to a war of wills between the two quarterbacks, definitely. You said you saw Georgia in the opener against Oregon, and immediately knew that they, hey, this team has the potential to get back. Um, comparing last year's team and, and I guess the weight and the burden that was on them of getting to the national championship and getting that 41-year drought away versus this year's team trying to win a second straight, what do you see as the two biggest as the difference between those two teams? I think last year the team – knew that they had to fail to get better like that loss in the sec championship game is the reason why they won a national championship i'm convinced of that i think that that loss taught them everything they needed to know about themselves showed them where they needed to get better with their conditioning uh, with the physicality that they play with and so it gave them a map for what a championship team looks like this year they already have the map they already knew what it takes to be a championship team um, so they were kind of striving for perfection all year, it seems like. Like, they would be up big on teams. I did the South Carolina game in the beginning of the season. They were up big on South Carolina, and Kirby's on the sideline coaching the heck out of his players like they're losing the game. And there's an expectation not to allow a touchdown. You know, in the beginning of the season, they didn't allow anyone to score and get into the red zone. So I think that the difference is that last year – they knew they had to fail in order to learn, and this year it's been a strive for perfection. Um, so I, I think in that sense, the near loss to Ohio State in the semifinal is the best thing that could have happened to Georgia ahead of a national championship game. They needed to feel some kind of failure in what it felt like to almost lose a game. And I would have loved to be a fly on the wall during practice. <laughs> Kirby definitely got into them, and it was one of those things where he was relieved to walk off the field a winner, but he did not leave that game happy. So I think that's the best thing to happen in this Georgia team is how close that game against Ohio State was. Looking at that game, and, and really the last two for Georgia with the SEC championship included, do you see that the defensive performances and the, the lack of just a standout game as, as a vulnerability of this team? Or like you said earlier, do you think that's – it's just kind of a one-off deal in terms of a reloaded defense. Yeah, I don't know. I think that Georgia has had so much success 
it hasn't been challenged very much this season. So um, it's just a matter of, <coughs> excuse me, it's just a matter of a lack of, of challenges for them. And then the last two games, they were really challenged. And maybe they got a little too confident. You know, maybe, maybe um, cause this is a defense that in some areas is, is inexperienced and young and they needed to go through that to mature and the amount of points that they allowed in the SEC championship game and against Ohio State I think that is a good learning tool for them and force this group to mature so I think it's the best thing that could have happened to them ahead of the national championship in, in what ways do you think TCU can challenge them in similar ways <laughs> I'm gonna drink some water You're good. <laughs> So I think that TCU will challenge Georgia the same way that they challenge Michigan with their physicality. Like no one expects TCU to be a very physical team, especially on offense. <coughs> Excuse me, Max Duggan plays with so much physicality and will will his team to a win. You look at their receivers on the outside, guys like Quentin Johnston, who can really challenge the secondary, especially some of the younger players in the secondary. And then their run game, the physicality that they've run the ball with. So I think that Georgia has to be ready for a physical battle and uh, a big, a big upfront kind of punching match a little bit. We need, we need to look at this game. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a tickle in my throat no, that won't go away. I'm so sorry. No, you know, uh, what do you expect to see on Monday night? If you want to give a prediction, we don't like predictions. We'll go to it. I will not give a prediction. <laughs> because I'm covering the game. Um, but I think that this will be a hard-fought game, closer game than people think. And especially in the first half, I think it'll be a boxing match of one team taking a punch and another team responding, similar to what we saw in the semifinal games. Um, and I don't, I don't know, the line has Georgia, you know, winning by 13, 13 and a half points, something like that. I don't know if that'll be indicative of how close the game will feel, especially in the first half, because TCU is a team that is going to play with physicality. They have nothing to lose, and they're going to fight and claw, and their quarterback isn't going to walk off the field. Like, if he is has one leg dangling, he'll do it, and he'll do everything he can. So I think these are two teams that won't give up. That makes for a really, really good matchup. So I think it'll be a close game, and I think it'll be um, really compelling. If one team gets away in the end, maybe it'll be like in the fourth quarter. But I think we'll have a really good three-quarter game.